Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to calculate stock returns from stock prices and we can do it all in Excel. So let's get started. My name's Jeff from Finally Learn. I help you finally learn financial literacy, financial skills, Excel, so on. Here we have several different tickers. So sometimes, you know, I don't know the tickers for everything. A couple of these I do know, um, but you can do this in Excel. You don't have to make five different uh, Google searches or whatever. So here we have uh, Berkshire Hathaway. So let's go to the data ribbon. We have Apple, Coca-Cola, and so on. So I'm gonna highlight these and I hit stocks. And it's gonna pull the different, um, here we need alphabet. So here it's gonna pull the different um, stock symbols, Berkshire Hathaway, here we go. So now we have all the companies and we can pull the ticker which is just the symbol, the shortcut to get to this. So Apple, I'm gonna use Apple here in this next tab, A-A-P-L, so let's go with that, A-A-P-L. Now I already typed it in here, but you can copy and paste or whatever. So let's say we have a, a stock ticker, Apple, and we're gonna do for five years, and so the end of July 2018 through the end of July 2023, so that would be 60 months or five years, okay. So here we're going to use a function called stock history. So I'm going to search for stock history. I hit the FX to search for uh, formula builder here. So I'm going to do stock history. So here's what I need. I need to know the stock, which is the ticker symbol. I need to know the start date, which I've already put. The end date, there we go, point to it also. Now the interval. Now I don't remember these, so I always have to do it this way. I just do a comma and it says do you want it daily well daily will be you know 250 days for five years so that's going to be too much weekly that would be fine but monthly we're going to pull one month for 60 months that's going to be better and let's do comma again and it's going to say do we want the header yes we want to show the instrument identifier and header that'll make it easier we'll understand what we're doing and then what do we want to show we want to show the date so i'm going to hit zero and I'm going to show uh, the close, open, high, low, or volume. Well, all I really care about is the closing price. So I'll hit one, and we're finished with our formula. We'll hit uh, enter, and it pulls. Now watch this. It pulls all the stock prices for the end of the month. Now, I've gone ahead and formatted this for the end of the month because it, a lot of times it'll show July 1st, 2018. It's not really July 1st. You can go back and, and check this but it's really the last trade of July 2018. So this is really July ending uh, stock price. Now, the one thing I've done is, because I need the beginning price and ending price a lot of times, I went ahead and said, I'm gonna pull the beginning price right there, and at the very bottom, I wanna pull the ending price. It's 196. So it just did it based on this. So I think it's easy just to have this ready to go. Now. How do we calculate a monthly return? Well, um, it's going to be easy. We take the ending price divided by the beginning price, subtract out one, and so we, we have a 19.62% uh, monthly return, and we can just copy that all the way down. Remember, you can take it to the right corner and drag, or you know you can double click and all those formulas work. All right, so that's the way uh, Excel is going to be helpful for you. Now the annual return, we need to go to July. So we need to go to the end of July. We'll do the same math. We'll do the ending price divided by the beginning price. Uh, wait, I didn't do July. Ending price July divided by the beginning price and then subtract out one. So we have 11%, almost 12% return. Now I'm gonna copy this down which is 11 blanks and then um, one formula at the end. So I'm gonna copy it down and we'll check the last one. If the last one works, then we feel good about it. Let's check and it takes the July 2023 divided by the July 2022 and divides uh, it out and subtracts one. So it looks like it's working correctly. So now what we have, we have the monthly return for each month and we have the annual return for each of the five years. So we have some questions over here we're going to answer in just kind of a logical way. So what is our average monthly return? Well, average, average, and start here, go all the way down, 
And this is our average return. Our average return for each month is going to be 2.81%. Okay, that's helpful. It's kind of nice to know. Well, what's the average annual return? What's the same calculation? I'm going to start with the average and then just I'm going to edit. I'm going to take the annual return column and put that in it. So the annual return is something like 36.21 is our annual return. Let's check that, make sure we did it correctly. Looks like that's correct. So what is our monthly standard deviation? Well, it's the same uh, kind of uh, formula, except it's standard deviation formula. So STD started, it, we're gonna take the sample standard deviation. So we're gonna say, all these returns. So what is the standard deviation? Well, the standard deviation is something like 9.3% is our standard deviation. Now, you don't really report things uh, generally that way. You report them in an uh, annualized way, compounded monthly or compounded annually. So let's do the compounded monthly return. Now, I'm going to use a function called RRI, so I'm going to do the function builder, search for RRI. So what we have is we just have three things we need to know. What's the number of periods? I'm going to type in since it's monthly, 60 months. Our beginning number is 47. Our ending number is 196. So calculate our compounded monthly return is 2.39%. It's going to be a little bit less than the simple average. This is technically called a geometric mean rather than a, uh, just an, uh, a mean. So it's a little bit less because it shows the compounding effect. Compounded annual return, same kind of thing. We're going to do RRI. Number of periods is going to be five years. The beginning price is 47. The ending price is 196. So what we have is a 32 point almost 8% compounded annual growth rate or compounded annual return. So this 32 is going to be a little bit less than the average. So you can calculate the average, obviously super easy, uh, but you want to do the compounded rate or the annualized return of 32.79%. What kind of standard deviation do we have on those returns? Well, same kind of uh, calculation. We're going to do standard deviation. So standard deviation of the sample, we'll cal calculate this entire column. And what happens is um, that is a high standard deviation. We've got a good return, but the deviation um, is, is very high. Uh, I think sometimes you can calculate the S&P 500. The annualized standard deviation is something like around 18 or 20 percent. So this is more um, standard deviation than uh, this S&P 500. All right, let's do holding period return. Well, holding period return is the total return over all five years. So we're going to take the ending number, the 196, divided by the 47 minus 1. So our holding period return, we, we made 312%, almost 313% over the five years. So what's our total return? Well, let's just assume a $1,000 investment. So we'll take $1,000 times 312%. Somehow I made an error in the formula. See if that works, yeah. 3,129 would be your total return. Now to do the, the final value, if you have a $1,000 investment, what you have is you're going to take the $1,000, I'm going to type this in, times 1 plus the compounded annual growth rate of 32%. And we need to do this for five years, so to the fifth power. So here we have... 4,129 would be our ending investment. The first 1,000 is our initial investment. The extra 3,129 is our return. Now, we could have taken the total return plus 1,000 and got that 4,129, but I wanted to show you how to do that independently. So this is how you calculate the 
monthly returns, the annual returns, if you know the stock prices. Hope that helps. We'll see you on the next video.